Hi everyone, advanced AI promises incredible benefits in the near future, but it also comes with significant risks. While the upside is easy to grasp, a plethora of cognitive biases can prevent us from seeing the downside. These biases shape our perception about whether to speed up development or slow down for safety. Keep watching to learn more. This video has three parts, asking the big questions, cognitive bias and other troubles, and the answers no one wants to hear. Part one, asking the big questions. AI is such a flexible technology that there are many possible benefits and risks from having advanced AI systems. It's possible to focus primarily on the benefits and revel in the possibilities of the near future. For example, if you read about or watch Ray Kurzweil, you'll definitely get this impression. Or you could check out an essay written by the CEO of Anthropic, Dario Amodei, which is called Machines of Loving Grace. One of the first lines of that article is, I think people are underestimating just how radical the upside of AI could be. If this is your view, it's natural to think that the development of AI will be overwhelmingly good and we should accelerate in that direction because we'll get to the good things faster. But on the other hand, it's also possible to focus on potential risks. This includes short-term risks like job loss, misinformation, biases, and instability of democratic systems. But it also includes long-term risks with potentially catastrophic consequences, up to and including the destruction of civilization. And of course, if this is your view, it's very natural to think that we should pause or at least slow down AI development to make sure we can do it safely. Here's a quote from Yoshua Bengio, one of the most famous scientists in the field, whom I actually interviewed in a previous video. You can check it out over here. He said, many of the no worry arguments I have heard or read are not actual sound arguments, but intuitions of people who feel certain there is no danger, but offer no convincing chain of reasoning. In this video, I'm gonna focus primarily on these negative aspects. Why people have this intuition that there is no danger and therefore don't really pay attention to the arguments. After all, people are mostly happy to believe that their lives are about to get better. And if that's what you're after, check Check out Machines of Loving Grace, which I'll link to in the description below. But there is this strange reluctance to engage in the negative sides of AI risk, which is not surprising because there are actually strong cognitive reasons for people to focus on the positives. But we're trying to learn something new here, so here we go. Let's focus on a few questions in particular. First, is AGI coming and will it take my job? Second, are AI biases and misinformation serious and should we regulate them? And third, should existential AI risk be taken seriously? One way or another, these questions and the ideas behind them will be profoundly impactful on our lives. Yet my sense is that many of us don't act on this. We're just too busy living and it's hard to get a sense of the bigger picture. We'll return to these questions near the end of the video, but for now, let's dive into cognitive biases. Part two, cognitive biases and other troubles. There are plenty of reasons why someone might not be receptive to new information and just stubbornly clings on to their previous ideas. Many of them fall under the broad umbrella of cognitive biases, which are basically different ways that our brains are not really fully rational and instead tend to prefer certain thought patterns over others. For instance, there's the idea of motivated cognition, which basically means if it's very important for you to believe something in particular, like your job or your life depends on it, then you will certainly believe it. An example of this is if you are Yan LeCun, head of AI at Meta, and you don't believe that there's any danger from AI risks. But your job also depends on you thinking this. Your brain doesn't even think the thoughts that are not good for you. This keeps you happier in a situation where you basically have to go along with whatever the perspective is, but it makes you very unreceptive to arguments to the contrary. Sometimes people are simply short-sighted, which is actually another form of cognitive bias called present bias. In this case, you emphasize the importance of the present time over future times. I've observed many cases where people are very individualistic, which corresponds to the bias of diffusion of responsibility, even to the point of saying existential risk or extinction are not my problem, someone else should solve it. There can also be propaganda and political and social contexts that force people to think in certain ways or act in certain ways. We humans are social animals, and so when our group is thinking something in particular, we're a lot more likely to go along with it. But anyway, let's dive into some specific cognitive biases in more detail. One broad category of cognitive bias is called the framing effect. This means that you respond differently to different questions or statements that are framed differently, but are basically saying exactly the same thing. One example of this is that people are more likely to actually modify their behavior to a positive statement than a negative statement. 
For example, I don't know, a clean energy future will save X lives instead of we're going to go extinct due to climate change. Ah, you thought I would use an AI example, didn't you? Okay then. Medical AI will eliminate health disparities and dramatically expand people's lifespans. Instead of medical nanobots inside our body means that corporations can control us. I already mentioned the present bias as well, which is also called hyperbolic discounting. We tend to value very short-term risk and reward much more heavily than things that will happen in the distant future. This was a useful bias for survival when humans were trying to hunt for food and avoid danger because whatever is happening right now is probably the most important thing in your life. But it leads to all sorts of short-sighted behavior in today's modern world. It means people are much more likely to spend money now for some immediate gratification rather than invest it, for example. I also talked briefly about the bias of diffusion of responsibility. This is also called the bystander effect. Basically, if something has to be done by someone, but you're in a very large group of people, then you don't really feel obligated to do it. And the larger the group, the stronger this disinterest is. Of course, this has lots of negative consequences. People don't step up and volunteer to do things, even pretty easy things. Oh, recycling can be done by other people. My own individual behavior doesn't really impact the whole. Incidentally, this is why a smaller group of people tends to have better governance, tends to run a lot more smoothly. Because when something has to be done and people look around and they see that there's really only a few options, they feel a lot more likely to volunteer. Even when you just consider one person, there's something called egg egocentric bias, which is the tendency for someone to rely more heavily on their own opinion and perspective than they should. We've all seen this, especially amongst the less educated portions of the population in the distrust over scientists and experts that has arisen in the last decade or so. When combined with availability bias, which is the tendency to consider things that you can actually remember to be more probable, this means that people, especially people that are less educated, tend to value their own perspective and memory more heavily. So if they haven't actually seen something happen personally in their own lifetime, then they feel like it's very unlikely. Of course, there's also optimism bias, which is pretty self-explanatory. You feel like surely the best outcome is the one that will actually happen. And you may not have heard of primacy and recency bias, which is basically if you're given a long long list of things like this list of biases, you're more likely to remember the first item in the list, which is primacy bias, and also the last item in the list, which is recency bias. That's why I left normalcy bias to the end, because it's important and I wanted you to remember it. Normalcy bias is basically the assumption that things will continue as normal. In other words, it's a refusal to plan for or react to a disaster which has never happened before. And technically, normalcy bias is a type of cognitive dissonance, which is what happens in your brain when you have contradictory information, which takes a mental toll on your brain as you figure out how to deal with it. And in the case of normalcy bias, you deal with it by just going, well, whatever normally happens is what will probably happen. By the way, there are tons of cognitive biases that psychologists have identified, about 150, I think. I just picked out some of the ones that are most relevant when it comes to discussions about AI risk. Part three, the answers no one wants to hear. First, a disclaimer. Obviously, or I hope it's obvious, I am human, and therefore subject to the same biases and fallacies as everybody else. So the things we're going to discuss in this section are not necessarily absolute truth, but it does represent my best considered analysis of AI risk possibilities. Let's go back to those three questions from the beginning of the video. First, is AGI coming and will it replace my job? Answer, yes. Second, are AI biases and misinformation serious? And should we regulate them? Answer, yes. And third, should existential AI risk be taken seriously? Answer, yes. I'll go through some justifications in more detail. Please note that I've tried to word these justifications as strongly as possible to potentially invoke some of your cognitive biases. Keep in mind that I still believe what I'm saying is just a very strong way of stating it. And if you have a negative reaction to one or more of them, try to figure out which biases might be affecting you. So first, regarding the question about AGI. Well, AI is fundamentally a technology of automation. The same way databases automated filing cabinets and email automated snail mail, AI extends automation into the domain of reasoning and thought. 
Before long, AI will reach human levels and it will be faster, smarter, and cheaper than humans. It will inevitably replace nearly all jobs. Let's say those ideas encounter some resistance in your brain. It could be because of normalcy bias, you look around and jobs look pretty much the same to you, or because of egocentric bias, you haven't yet experienced losing your job to AI, or even because of optimism bias, you think surely I'll be the exception even when 95% of your colleagues have been laid off. If you aren't doing anything about about it, such as trying to figure out how at risk your job is from automation, or adopting AI tools yourself so that you can ride the wave. It could be because of the bystander effect, because you think that your government should prevent this from happening and it's not really up to you. It could be because of availability bias, because you can't think of or recall any instances of industry-wide disruptions like this, especially if you're younger. Or again, it could just be simple optimism bias. I actually do think that many people are doing something about this though, especially if you're a regular viewer of my channel, which is why it's the easiest of the three questions. And to be clear, despite the biases, you could either support or not support the statement. It's just that the biases are going to bias you. They're going to start you more on one side of that equation than the other. You can always fight bias by exposing yourself to more information about the subject. But anyway, on to the second question about misinformation. AI models are approaching superhuman persuasive levels. So AI makes it easy for anyone to create misinformation that is highly believable. Hijacking elections, obscuring truth, and spamming the internet with low quality text. Many of the defenses that have evolved in our society to deal with rogue human adversaries are no longer sufficient. Our institutions are at risk, including the internet, democracy, and the rule of law. By the way, I wrote that myself, not with a super persuasive model. Again, if you happen to not believe that statement, it could be because of normalcy bias. If you're not exposed to much social media and you don't see a lot of bots that are spewing random stuff and your immediate circle isn't targeted by election campaign ads, like many of us are, then you might have trouble believing this. There would probably be a bit of egocentric bias thrown in in that case as well, because I feel like this is pretty popularized in the news and media. As a society, we're not really doing anything about this for a couple of reasons. First is the bystander effect. You feel like it really should be someone else's problem. It's a abstract problem, nothing that is within your control. Also because of normalcy bias, but probably most importantly because of the framing effect. Facebook tells us its mission is to connect people not to deliver election campaign ads. There's also a lot of propaganda that AI labs in particular know what they are doing and should not be regulated. Ironic because propaganda is basically the same thing as misinformation. Next onto the third question about existential risk. We are creating intelligent entities that are beyond our control. AI could even lead to human extinction. It's not a foregone conclusion. There are probably good safeguards that exist, but if we're not even attempting to slow down and find them. We're basically rolling the dice. AI is not like every other technology. Even nukes, when they blow up, only directly impact one city. An existential risk gone wrong means no humans anywhere, period. Okay, I think I probably managed to state that strongly enough that many of my viewers will disagree with that statement. If so, it could be because of normalcy bias. You look around and you don't see AI causing extinction of anything except possibly artist jobs, I suppose. It's probably related to availability bias. You can't think of an instance that you recall where a technology has turned on its creators as dramatically as I had proposed in that statement. Again, egocentric bias will also kick in here and say, it just doesn't seem realistic to me. It goes against my intuition and I trust my intuition. By the way, if you actually want to be convinced that existential AI risk is a bit of a problem, you can check out this previous video I made, which includes an interview with one of the most famous scientists in deep learning. As for why, as a society, we aren't really doing anything about existential risk, I think it's mostly bystander effect. It's everybody thinking, well, yeah, that's a problem, but surely somebody else is solving it. It's also the framing effect. Like I mentioned, people respond better to positively phrased statements instead of negatively phrased ones. And that's about as negatively phrased as you can get. And finally, there's optimism bias. We really just don't think that will happen to us. We're focused on the here and now, 
where life seems fine. Again, it's fully possible to have heard a statement like that, gone off and done a lot of research, and concluded that you simply don't agree with it. The biases just weight you in a certain direction upon initial judgment. And the initial snap judgment with system one is about as far as a lot of people get. And for existential risk specifically, it's a pretty hard thing to get a handle on, a pretty hard thing to understand, a pretty hard thing to realize. You may have heard of the seven stages of grief, namely shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, testing, and acceptance. Well, I have jokingly come up with the seven stages of AI existential risk enlightenment. Denial, anger, intellectual acceptance, some research, emotional acceptance, depression, and life change. Existential risk is the type of thing that everybody denies when they first hear about it, and you might intellectually accept it at some point, but it doesn't really impact your life, and only when you really think about it a lot do you start to emotionally accept that this could really be an issue and start potentially making changes in your life because of it. But maybe I should leave that for another video. Finally, in conclusion, advanced AI could be really great or really terrible, and your risk profile determines which of those you will think is most important. I have known people that are basically entirely optimistic or entirely pessimistic, and I think that neither of those is very healthy, and if you're one of those people, it might be worth your while to sit down with those arguments you're not familiar with and see if you are experiencing any cognitive biases when you look at them. We discussed a number of biases that are relevant to AI risks, including primacy bias, where you remember the first item in the list, optimism bias, where you just believe for no particular reason that things will turn out well, normalcy bias, where you assume that everything will be normal and you refuse to plan for a disaster that has never happened before, and of course, recency bias, where you remember the last item in a list. We examined three statements, all of which I happen to believe are true, about AGI, misinformation, and existential risk. I hope this discussion will help you update a little bit more rationally when you encounter arguments in the future. If you liked this video, check out this previous one I made where I talk about existential risks. It features some clips with Yoshua Bengio, so that alone makes it worthwhile. Finally, if you'd like to engage in discussions in a small community where there's less bias of diffusion of responsibility, make sure to join our Discord channel. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.